This week, three of the Southwest's finest chefs determine newcomer Jude Karima. Depends on how you cook it, I guess. Culinary heavyweight Dom Chapman. Bring me my chariot of fire. <laughs> and Michelin starred Josh Eggleton. It'd be fantastic to go all the way. Are competing to get their dishes to a banquet marking the centenary of the Women's Institute at London's Drapers Hall. Yesterday, Jude won the day. And I can see this dish going far. Very, very pleased with that. Today, it's a fight for the main course. Who's going to win the Battle of the Sheep? It's an interesting one, isn't it? Who will claim victory? I'm going to give you a nine. And who will lose out? Is this fusion or confusion? But has he done too much? I'm going to give you a six. In 1915, the Women's Institute was set up to encourage women to produce food to feed the nation during the First World War. Today, they're known for their trustworthy recipes that have helped make British food great. The chefs have delved into the rich history of the organization <laughs> and been inspired by the influential women in their lives. That is absolutely delicious to create outstanding dishes worthy of the WI. That is really lovely. Judging the chefs this week is Emily Watkins. After cooking at last year's banquet, she has high expectations. I'm looking for a plate of food which is going to just tell you a story. It's going to look so mouth-watering that you just can't wait to eat it. A real celebration dish. And of course, most importantly, it's got to taste absolutely delicious. How are you all feeling? I've got a lot to do today. I'm going to be running hard to, uh, to get everything done and to catch you two up as well. You mm -hmm. specifically. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, one point's nothing, you know? No. No, it isn't. It, is, no. Because it can be everything as well. I'm very happy to be where I am halfway. You know, we've all got to push really, really hard, make sure our food is immaculate, hits the brief. <laughs> Let's go to that banquet. <laughs> yeah. First up is Jude Karima. He's in joint first place after his Cornish seafood dish earned him an eight, the highest score for yesterday's fish course. It's so close, there's nothing between us, so I think, you know, I've got to watch my back on Josh and I've got to stay beside Dom. The judges' uh, chamber is kind of in sight now. Morning, Jews. Hello, Chef. How are you feeling today? Still nervous. Still nervous. You should be feeling pretty good after yesterday. Really happy. Good. So um, hopefully I can carry that on today. Excellent. So talk me through a bit what you're doing today. The title of the main course is Lamb Jerusalem. What's inspired this dish then? This uh, recipe pays homage to my mum, yeah. Teresa. Okay. She's Chinese Malay. So this is my homage to her. I'm going to be making a soy master stock. What, what exactly is a soy master stock? This is something that my mum passed down to me. And I've adapted. Uh, you have your mirin. Lovely um, sweet wine. Lovely. And your soy uh, cinnamon sticks. Yeah. Some star anise. Yeah. Some clove. Got lots of spices there. All of them quite strong, aren't they? I'll make the stock and then that will be added to a lamb stock. It is very, very punchy. The lamb's obviously the centrepiece of the dish. Yes. And I've got some lamb loins. Um, that's going to be marinated in rosemary and thyme and garlic. Uh, and then I've got some sweetbreads which I'll put in brine and I'll pan fry. I've got here some lamb shoulder, yeah. which I'm going to yes. braise in my soy master stock. And then I'm going to flake and I'm going to wrap it in the Brussels leaves. So these little Brussels sprouts? It's going to look like a little garden scene. For the garden scene, I've got um, hazelnuts. Uh, that's going to be part of a soil, which I'm going to make with some morels. Mm -hmm. I'm going to utilize some vegetables to make some purees. Mm -hmm. So I've got some uh, carrots. Yeah. Um, some Jerusalem artichokes and um, some peas. Growing up in New Zealand, we used to have a lovely big garden, so this is like a, again, part of my childhood. Hopefully I can cut my trousers off today and prove to you that uh, I deserve to be where I am. OK, well, best of luck, but do you mind if you keep your trousers on for this one? So Jude's lamb in Jerusalem, he's got quite a lot of elements again. Last year, I overstretched myself by creating an allotment which had too many purees, too many different types of vegetables. It took a long time. Um, I hope that Jude's practice has got that right. Next up is returning contender Dom Chapman. He's joint top with Jude, 
but was disappointed with a seven for his fish course and is determined to pull ahead of his rivals today. This competition is ruthless. The scores have been pretty good, but I want better. This is the big hitting dish, isn't it? This is the main course. You know, I really want to be in the judging chamber on Friday. Morning, Emily. Hey, Dom. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah? You're looking very, very refreshed, good. ready to go? Yeah, I'm fighting. And so what's your dish, then, you're doing for the main course? Bring me my chariot of fire. Right. And it's my story. Yeah. I, I'm Bring me my chariot of fire is the biggest hitting line in the hymn, mm. Jerusalem. This is the main course. This is the big event. Yeah. There's also, you know, a lot of grow your own veg, celebrating the WI's ethos in producing their own yep. food. So what exactly are you going to be doing then? Lamb hot pot with mini racks of lamb. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to use kidneys mm -hmm. uh, and some sweetbreads. Tell me how the, um, the oysters fit into all this. So this is going back to old school English cooking. Back in years gone by, when oysters were cheap, yeah. they used to chuck a little oyster into a hot pot. Yeah. I'll serve breast of lamb on a plate yeah. with a lovely sauce. I'm going to roast these wonderful carrots. Yeah. I'm going to pickle some red cabbage. I want to serve my, my lamb in an allotment setting and just have some fun with it. So you two are doing really quite similar inspired dishes. Do you feel you've got the edge today? I always think I've got the edge, yeah. but, um, you know, you might have another opinion. How do you feel about that? There's fighting talk from Dom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the battle. Dom's bring me my chariot of fire. Dom's also chosen to present his main course as a garden allotment. My only concern is whether it's going to be modern enough for a banquet. Trailing on 14 points is Michelin starred Josh Eggleton. Last year, he cooked for the judges, but was knocked out before the finals. He's determined to get further this time, but his dishes are falling short. Yesterday, I was a bit disappointed with the fish score. I wanted to better myself. I haven't. Today, I've definitely got to. And there's only one point that I'm behind, and it can all change. Morning, Josh. Morning. How you doing? Very good. How are you doing? Good, thank you. What's your dish called, Josh? Around the table with your five a day. The heart of the WI is home cooking, mm -hmm. having the family around the table. This is actually, I've got, I've got another nan here. Yeah. So this is memories of being around the table yeah. with my family. So I want to represent that on a plate. Lovely. This is a rack of mutton. Yeah. I want it to kind of reference chops, you know, proper traditional. Um, I'm going to render the fat first, water bath it, yeah. and then re it in okay. butter, infuse with thyme yeah. in the pan. And then I have the shanks of mutton as well. This is going to be braised mm -hmm. and shredded, and I'll turn that into um, a shepherd's pie. Oh, OK. OK. So I'm going to do some deviled kidneys. Yeah. So we've got some mustard in there, some Worcestershire sauce, and some hot sauce, and a tiny bit of vinegar. It's not too offensive. It's not, um, it's not like... It's not going to be overpowering. It's just kind of just slightly warm. OK. So anchovies, that's going to be um, made into an anchovy and roasted garlic butter. Just a tiny touch to go with some buttered broccoli. Yeah, it sounds yeah. delicious. Josh is doing around a table with your five a day, which is a great idea. And a little bit like what Dom's doing, he's using very traditional dishes. It's going to be interesting to see how he's bringing it up for a banquet-style dish. So it's going to be really interesting seeing three totally different dishes, all from lamb or mutton, in your case. Best of luck, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Chef. Cheers. With the scores so close at the halfway point, the atmosphere is tense in the kitchen. Uh, Jude, who's going to win the Battle of the Sheep? It's an interesting one, isn't it? So we've got three different styles, three different dishes. Yeah. Jude is very much a Pacific Rim Asian style of cook. Uh, it's really interesting cooking. I'm interested to see his take on roast lamb. Jude's a force to be reckoned with. Trailing Jude and Dom by one point, Josh is hoping to outdo his rivals with his take on a home-cooked family meal served at his nan's. He's braising mutton shanks for shepherd's pie and serving mutton chops, which he's cooking in a water bath for extra tenderness. Isn't that the uh, older, tougher sister to my lamb? Definitely older, but not tougher. <laughs> Depends on how you cook it, I guess. Yeah. Honouring the WI's no-waste ethos, all three chefs are making the most of their meat with underused cuts. Dom's serving breast of lamb as well as kidneys and sweetbreads. Jude's also serving sweetbreads with his lamb loin and braised shoulder. Everybody loves a bit of sweetbread, don't we? What about the WI ladies? Do they love sweetbreads? I hope so. It's part of the whole animal, and it's delicious, so I think yeah. it's uh, criminal not to use them. 
I'm using kidneys. A little, kidneys. Bit more, little bit more traditional, um, you know, a bit more familiar, I, th I thought it would be. One point ahead of Josh. He's a, a tough competitor, so I'd like to keep that lead. But, yeah, he's doing his downers to, uh, to catch up, so I'm watching out for him. Jude's hoping to have the edge with his dish, lamb and Jerusalem, evoking memories of his mum's cooking with a take on her special master stock, an aromatic mix of Japanese rice wine called mirin, soy sauce and spices. Still Smelling amazing in here. Thank you. This must be your master stock, is it? It is the master stock. Would you like to try some? I'd love to try some. Lots of flavours. Soy master stock going to overpower the lamb? No, I prefer mint sauce on my lamb, but, you know, we'll see. Jude moves on to his three purees. Jerusalem artichoke and garlic, pea and mint, and carrot and star anise, which will all feature in his vegetable garden scene. Dom's roasting heritage carrots in a butter emulsion to be served within his allotment presentation. I've got a garden theme happening with mine as well. It's quite an obvious kind of thing to do, isn't it, you know? The, the WI... You know, they grow their own veg, they do all that sort of stuff, preserving us serving this food on a, in a garden setting kind of fits. To research his dish, Dom visited a WI group called the Cambridge Bluebells, who draw on the past to inspire a new generation of women. He met group president Joanne to do some digging. Good, welcome to the Cambridge Bluebells allotment. Brilliant, do lots you, of work. Uh, fancy getting involved? Am I underdressed? Not at all. No? <laughs> <laughs> so we own this bit of plot. It's called the Dig for Denman plot. Um, and all the produce that we actually grow, we sell to ourselves or to colleagues. So we've got a local shop that started selling it as well. And all that money goes to a bursary for our Bluebells, our members, to go to our college, which is called Denman College. Brilliant. Denman College opened its doors in 1948 to help educate the growing Women's Institute after the war and today it's still the heart of the organisation. Denman was named after our chair during the war. She's called Lady Denman, and she was also the director of the Women's Land Army. I'm actually wearing kind of a replicated um, Women's Land Army uniform from the Second World War. Um, and it's especially special to me because I come from a line of Land Army girls. And food is a major part of the w yeah. WI, isn't it? You get so much out of sitting and eating a plate of your own food. I think that's self-empowerment, and that's what the WI is all about. These strawberries, the jams. Do you know what? It's a stereotype of the WI that we happily live up to. We're very passionate about our preserves. After helping out with hoeing and harvesting, Dom cooked up freshly picked veg. A few little edible flowers. To get a measure of what would go down well with the WI. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tuck in, ladies. Mmm. 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 It's really good. Winning dish. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. In the kitchen, Dom's determined to outshine his rivals with his main, Bring Me My Chariot of Fire. He starts his hot pots with potatoes cooked in lamb fat, carrots, mushrooms and lamb sauce, followed by meat from his lamb rack. They then go under the grill. Dom moves on to his red cabbage, which he's pickling. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Pickled cabbage? Pickled cabbage, yeah. It's just a little garnish, so it's a little bit of game on the plate. You've got to have a honorary pickle on the plate for the, uh, the ladies. So that's the nice balance you're looking for? Yeah, it's quite sharp, you know, yeah. and, and I like that because it will cut through the meat. Josh is also aiming for a high score. So far, he's had two sevens and knows he has to do better today. I need to claw back those points. I really need to get this right, otherwise the dessert are going to have a big task. But as Josh checks on his mutton rack, which he's cooking sous vide, he spots a problem. Dog, did you unplug my water bag? No, don't give me that. I haven't been anywhere near Who that. Who plugged that in? Nothing to do with me. <laughs> Was it you, though? No. <laughs> the water bath's been switched off. I feel like there might be a bit of sabotage in the kitchen. Um, I'm already losing, so, you know, what, what are they playing at? As he plugs the water bath back in, Josh realises what's happened. Right, I might have done this myself, actually. I pulled that one out. Ah. Well, I thought that was a water bath. Uh, crisis averted, the temperature has a drop, so it's back on, it's absolutely fine. He moves on to his swede and carrot mash, adding curry spices for an extra kick. Next, his shepherd's pie, which he's refined by using braised mutton shanks instead of traditional lamb mince. So how do you think the Women's Institute ladies are going to think about the um, shank 
Shepherd's pie. It's a bit different, um, but I wanted to just be a bit more indulgent, a bit more, a bit more of a celebration, you know. So I'm quite happy with this. I like it. See you later. Like Josh, Jude's cooking his marinated lamb loin sous vide. While it cooks, he moves on to an element that has Emily interested. This is your um, edible soil, is it? It is. You've got hazelnut. Got morels in here. A little bit of cocos. It's really earthy flavour. All ties in. It's very odd, isn't it? Once you try everything with the purees, it all ties right. in. Adds a real richness to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping that it will be delicious. Dom is first to the pass with his Bring Me My Chariot of Fire, another homage to the WI anthem. He brings out his hot pots. How are you doing, Dom? Good, thank you. For an old-fashioned touch, he adds a fresh oyster and tops his hot pots with fried sweetbreads and kidneys before placing them in a special veg box along with his gardening props. Then he fills up his mini watering can. What sauce is that? A lovely lamb gravy. Dom starts his plate with his rolled and roasted lamb breast and pickled red cabbage. He drizzles with sauce and garnishes with butter roasted carrot. Finally, his steamed greens and the rest of his carrots go into the mini wheelbarrows. Well done. Brilliant. Okay. Wow. That's it. Bring me my chariot of fire. <laughs> Where's the fire? I'm the fire. Let's <laughs> go. Okay. Awesome. What would you suggest we start with? Let's dig straight into the to the lamb. Nice flavour. Good flavour. Well seasoned. Happy with the cooking of the sweet bread and the kidney? Kidney just melts away. The sweet bread of oil just melts away. Hot pot. Lovely deep flavour from the lamb. I think the WI would love that. Yeah. Are you happy with the flavour which has come through in this lamb sauce? I think that lamb sauce has got bags of flavour anymore and, you know, it will totally overpower the dish. And then the pickled cabbage, would you recommend having that with a bit of the hot pot? Definitely, definitely. Nice acidity level, not too harsh. Mm. The oyster's just been lightly poached in the, in the hot pot at the very end. Yep. That's lovely, isn't it? It's almost seasoned to the lamb, yeah. the oyster. Is this dish worrying you? Yeah, I'd say it is a little bit. Yeah, it's, and it's good. I'd happily give this a strong nine. What would you give it out of ten? For me, it's a nine. Yeah, I reckon, it, I reckon you're right. How are you doing, Dom? All right, boys. Yeah, good. How did it go, Dom? I'm really happy. I, you know, it's, it's how I wanted it to be, and... Uh, yeah? That's, that's all you can do, isn't it, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. Tasted great. Yeah. Love the hot pot. Yeah. Delicious. We really enjoyed it. That was Good. brilliant. Good. It's good? A little bit. <laughs> Jude is next to the pass with his lamb and Jerusalem. For me, this is all about what I, you know, we grew in the garden, about what we did you know, as a little kid. He pan fries brine sweetbreads and fills mock stone walls with Jerusalem artichoke and garlic puree then spoons some onto his boards, along with his carrot and star anise and pea and mint purees. He tops with his edible soil. What, what is that stuff? That is uh, just some hazelnut soil. Crack yeah, on, you know. don't, don't, don't let me disturb you, you know what I mean? You are disturbing me. I know, I know. Go away. Next, Jude plants his baby carrots and serves with his sweetbreads, sliced lamb loin and sprouts stuffed with braised lamb shoulder. Finally, Jude pours his master stock infused lamb sauce into jugs. Um, I'll tell you what I love is those sprouts. They're great. And your mum's going to be proud as punch for this? I hope so. Yeah? Yes. Well done. Enjoy, boys. Thank you. The lamb's a little bit of a sideshow, though, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a lot of puree and, and, and not a lot of lamb. And the sauce has got your master stock in it. It does, it does. The sauce, that's going to be a problem. It's going to go everywhere. You're happy with the balance of it? Yes, I think that if you misuse it, it can be really overpowering. Do you think the aromatics in this sauce are overpowering the lamb? You're losing the lamb in that? Yeah, and even the sauce, which is a lamb stock base, I can't taste any lamb. No. Is this fusion or confusion? <laughs> and those sweetbreads were what you're looking for? It's tender. Mm -hmm. Sweetbread's nice. Mm. Really tasty, really clean. 
So you've got this quite lean lamb loin here, haven't you? Uh, did you trim it? Um, I did want it to be just a nice piece of roast meat, only like little bits of fat. I don't really like lamb without fat. Yeah. So you've got three purees here. Mm. Are you happy with the consistency on all of them? Yes, I, I am. I think the purees are too wet. Beautiful shoulder of lamb, you braise it and then you stuff it in a sprout. Is there enough shoulder on the plate? And this is your hazelnut and morel mushroom soil. Mm. I think the soil enhances the flavour, it adds a real richness. Do you think there's too much of it? Yeah. Out of ten. I'd love to get an eight or more. I'd say seven. I think seven's a kind mark. I'm not really worried by this dish. Hello, chefs. How'd it go, Jude? Um, Emily doesn't give away anything, does she? So uh, I'm not too sure how anything went. Josh is last to the pass with his round the table with your five a day, which he's hoping will lift him from last place, being a dish close to his heart. Memories from an aunt's house. We always used to make shepherd's pie. Then I graduated to making it for her um, when we used to come home from school, so I started cooking, I think. Josh brings his pies out to rest. Next, he chops his pan-fried kidneys and finishes them in a deviled sauce of lamb stock, mustard, sherry vinegar, Worcestershire and chilli sauce. Josh spoons his green bean chutney into jars. Broccoli and curry-spiced Sweden carrot mash go into a bowl with garlic, parsley and anchovy butter. Where'd you get your crockery from? Got it from a nan. I want it to represent people bringing something to dinner, you know? He slices his sous vide cooked mutton into chops and serves them on the side of his shepherd's pie. Uh, perfectly cooked. Yep, looking good. I want it to be medium. Josh finally pours his mutton sauce into his vintage gravy boats. Lovely. Lovely. Has this given you a bit of deja vu about your, your nan's table? Yeah, absolutely. These placemats are hers. They're, like, 50 years old, so I yeah. need to return these, otherwise... Okay. <laughs> Don't get them dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, for me, is Josh on a completely different tack. This is this is a very traditional kind of plate of food, isn't it? So, to start with, we're going to try your mutton chops. Is this mutton going to be tender? Mmm. Beautifully tender. Happy with how it's cooked? Yeah, I wanted to cook it a bit more than medium well. Do you think the women of the WI are going to like that? You know what, I'm going to have to say yes. Especially when you have it with some Swede mash as well, Swede carrot mash, that's great. And those Swede curry carrot. spices going through there, you're, that's what you're looking for, that kind yeah. of... Yeah. I think the kidneys could be a dish on their own. I think the shepherd's pie could be a dish on its own. And I think the lamb or the mutton chops could be a dish on their own. Has he done too much? I want to better myself and admit yesterday and the day before. I'd hope for an eight. Is this any more than a great dinner cooked at your grand's house. Chef. Hi, okay. guys. Happy? Yeah. It was OK, I think. Can't tell, can you? Would your nan be proud? Yeah, of course you would. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could envisage myself sitting, having dinner at your nan's. Yeah. <laughs> You're not invited. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to stay in front, um, and you need to, especially with uh, you two. Are you hoping for some high marks today? I hope so. It was as I wanted it to be, so, you know, you've got to keep pushing. I've been here before, I've gone home on Thursday. I don't want that to happen. I want to have a go cooking for the judges. Mm. <laughs> Hi, chefs. Hi. Hi, Emily. Josh, I'm going to start with you. With your round the table, with your five a day. The shepherd's pie is absolutely delicious. The shank instead of the mint made it banquet worthy. The curry spices in your Swede mash work surprisingly well. But the kidneys for me were a bit of an issue. They were quite strong in flavour, which kidneys are prone to being, and I felt that they were too much for the dish and perhaps almost a little unnecessary. The mutton chop, I love mutton, but it was a touch over for me. 
Jude, if you're Lamb in Jerusalem, the presentation was really eye-catching. The lamb sweetbreads were my favourite part of the dish, really nicely cooked. And your mum's master stock was very you, a really nice influence into that sauce. All three purees were delicious, but they were overpowered by the soil, which was predominantly hazelnut in flavour. The loin, again, for me, was a bit overcooked and a little bit dry. And your braised shoulder in the Brussels sprouts, such a brilliant idea, just lacked a bit of punch in the flavouring. And lastly, the slate. For a group of ladies at a banquet, pouring a sauce over slate, you are running a very high risk of having a lot of spillages. Dom, and you'll bring me my chariot of fire. I was concerned about this dish being too traditional and not exciting enough for a banquet. I was wrong. The hot pot was wonderful. The oyster was a really delicious addition. The kidney and sweetbread on top, both perfectly cooked. The lamb breast, it was cooked perfectly. And the roasted carrots, delicious. For me, the only improvement to this dish to make it really banquet worthy, I would like to see a prime cut at the centre of this plate, like a rack or something. The breast is too delicious to lose, and I would suggest putting that into the hot pot. So, to the scores. Josh. I'm going to give you... an eight. It needs a little bit of refinement. Jude. I'm going to give you... a six. I'm sorry, Jude but I can't see this dish as the banquet as it is. It does need some work done to it. Dom. I'm going to give you... a nine. I think it's a really lovely dish with a great story. It's such a close competition. Cook from your heart and be proud of what you put up on the pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well done. Well done. Nine and eight. Yeah, well, well done. done. Well done, eight. <laughs> Going into the dessert course, Dom has a clear lead on 24 points. Josh is now in second place with 22, and Jude is trailing by one point on 21. So eight for my main course. I feel good. I'm happy that I bettered myself, but, you know, could have done a nine. <laughs> happy? But, yeah, yeah, no, but, but, but still wanting to sort of uh, keep fighting to the end, to be honest with you. Nine points for the main course. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. How are you feeling, Jude? Oh, I think it's a enough score, but, you know, obviously disappointed at the same time. One minute on top. Next, I'm chasing. The dessert course is next, and I really, really have got to beat Josh now because he's in second place. So, yeah, a lot of work to do. Well, also searching for their just desserts, it's crunch time for a biscuit challenge. Head over to the tent on BBC One for Bake Off now. Well, here next on BBC Two, which health tests are worth the time and money? Michael Mosley puts himself through a rigorous set of examinations to find out.